Hey everyone, welcome back. Glenn McDonald from 54 Bus, and today is the first in a series of breaking down Canadian Shield Lakes. I asked the YouTube community and you guys responded and said that the first one you guys wanted was deep water structure. So we're gonna be looking primarily at summer patterns in deep water areas on Shield Lakes and we're gonna start right now. Shield Lakes are notorious for their hard to fish deep water areas thousands of islands within the Canadian Shield. Everyone looks good, every spot looks good. It's how you break them down and how you can get to a spot and relate to your style of fishing that's gonna lead you to success or failure on Shield Lakes. So in our first example here, here's an island with some rocks around it. And we're gonna be specifically looking at the spot on the, on this case, be the left side of the island. In real life, that's actually the west side of the island. So this is the first spot that we'll be looking at. Okay guys, so for our first example here, this is an island that runs east-west and it's not a very wide channel in the lake and because there's a lot of current that actually comes from west heading east we see a lot of fish that get pushed in around this western tip of this island what we look for a lot of times earlier in the season fish will be holding tight off of these rocks here or sometimes off the opposite side but by summertime we don't actually fish this eastern side very much we just focus on the western side and in particular, we're looking for these two shelves. South side has a 12 foot shelf, 10 or 12 foot shelf that we will see fish using. And then the Northwest side, off of all these submerged rocks here, we like to look for that first break. And we have about a 12 foot shelf. And actually a little bit further out, there's another rock pile that comes up to about eight feet. So it's like a secondary reef. So we try to target that saddle section in between there, but we primarily try to target that 12 foot shelf. And in the example that I'm gonna show you, I actually catch fish on this Harvey Javelin dive and rise. And a dive and rise is a key style of bait for that type of transition where you get fish that may be just suspended out over a saddle in between there or suspended over that 12 foot shelf. That particular day I was casting a dive and rise at the front and Dave was throwing a toad at the back and what he was doing was actually trying to run this a little bit deeper and a little bit slower to see if we had any fish that were sticking a little bit deeper off of structure. Holy shit. We just got one in the bag here. We've been seeing fish. We're pretty much right on our moon. We've seen the last three fish or four fish have been pretty active taking swipes at bucktails. We just pulled up on an island and we know there's a deeper point here. So Dave's throwing a toad and I just put on this Harvey Javelin dive and rise. And I was just working it slow over the deep part of the break and it hit way out from the boat and we had to cut a couple hooks off of it. I'll grab the fish here. That's a little one, it's like a 36 inch or something. You can back up, Katie. It's okay. We'll get a quick pick and we'll throw them back. Okay. Our second spot is a mid lake reef on Eagle Lake. And referring to the map, you can see that again, we are trying to target the deeper break line, that first major break, and find that first major shelf off of the structure. 
Again, like the previous example, you can cast tight up to the shallows and fish will be sitting there. But in a lot of cases, by midsummer, those fish have just drifted off that first break. They may not be down at depth at the 12 or 14 foot shelf, but they're going to be suspending out over them. So those are the type of fish that we are trying to target when we're looking at deeper water. Hey guys, for the second example, we are out on that mid lake reef on Eagle Lake, and this is basically what it looks like. So the rocks in the center are pretty much hittable, like they're one or two feet underwater. And then it breaks to a shelf on the north side. So in the example that we show, the wind is actually coming from the north heading south. And what we were targeting was that 12 foot shelf off the north side of structure. And we we're hoping to see fish suspended maybe just out over open water right there or sitting on that shelf. So as we come into there, again, I was using Harvey Javelin Dive and Rise. Richie was using a tube at the back of the boat and we are casting to similar spots. And we actually started on the east side of the structure. Richie cast some shallow structure to see if fish were holding tight, but it didn't take very many casts off the north side off of this 12 foot deep shelf and I got hooked up. We also fished this whole complex, usually to get that shelf at the top. We'll work the saddle. It's about a 14 foot deep saddle that runs to a secondary reef just further west of here. And then we'll work right around and we will try to hit, right in here is about a 10 or 12 foot shelf at the bottom kind of southwestern corner of this structure. So we try to hit all of that and again, we're looking for fish sitting suspended off that first break. And we're not as concerned with hitting the super shallow structure, especially in the summer. A lot of times the fish just are not sitting right up tight, right in the shallow. So we look for that deeper water. So in this example, again, we cast it off the north side, which is the windswept side of the structure. And we're looking for fish sitting off of that first or second break. And in this case, that fish was sitting in about 10 or 12 feet on that first break shelf. And this is a clip that I've showed a few times this summer. This is a mid lake 51 that we had that we ended up getting and it played out almost perfectly for us. Hey guys, Glenn McDonald with 54 bus and me and my daughter Katie and my brother-in-law Richard have been grinding out here all day. We've had, I think, three hit baits. We finally got a nice one in the bag here. I don't know that it's a 50, but it's gonna be in a good upper 40s. And the last little while we've been throwing diamond rise. So this is a Harvey Javelin, and it hit it way out from the boat, just crushed it hard, doubled us over. We're out on a mid lake, kind of rock pile reef, and we got wind blowing right down in here. And we just kind of come here on a whim. We were like ready to head in for dinner. Let's have a look at this fish. Next example, we're up on Cedar Lake, and this is actually an island complex that I used as an inspiration for the 25 can't miss musky patterns, where I wrote a chapter in this book. And what I did is I used that island complex as a guide, and the guys at the magazine actually had an illustrator do it up. But we fished that area a lot, and there's a lot of things that go on there that we think is are really cool and it gives you the ability to fish shallow but there's a lot of those secondary or like primary and secondary breaks off of it that are just so key for us hey guys this is the third example and this pretty much comes right out of the 25 can't miss patterns book that musky hunter did and i did a chapter on dredging the edge with rubber so that's looking at an island like this and looking for that deeper shoreline and in the case of my article, we are looking at hitting these deep edges for fish. So in the case of the example that we have here, I'm actually using a bucktail. I'm using Dadson blade with no name. And I wasn't primarily casting for the edges. Normally in midsummer, we would be casting toads or things like bulldogs. 
Medusas along these deep breaking edges down to these shelves. And we would target those outside corners. We wouldn't really target the shallow areas as much. But on this particular day, we are seeing a lot of fish a little bit tighter to that first break line. So in this case, the fish were sitting around that eight foot area just as the break started. So as we moved up here, Dave was casting a toad at the back of the boat, trying to target that edge. So he's targeting these edges here as it starts to drop away. I was casting a bucktail and I was trying to hit that very top of that first transition. And in the example that we have here, the fish actually comes out of nowhere comes out of deep water and hits me and it actually hits on this shelf right here this 12 foot shelf as we had the boat sitting right here that fish come up from the deep into my figure eight and just hit basically the first bait that it's seen in this example i'm actually using a bucktail because i was casting right to the edge of that drop off and that's where we were seeing the fish that day but this fish actually came out of the deep from underneath the boat and it was again it was sitting on that first primary break and it wasn't the way we were actually targeting this fish because this whole day we seen fish up a lot tighter so <laughs> i got the hat trick today dave's got all the pike and again just annihilated this thing at the side of the boat that fish almost jumped in the boat eh dave like literally hit the windshield it's concussed this one now is out of commission for the night we had to cut some barbs but we'll take it a little bit smaller but still a decent fish i bet you it goes same as the last one just not as thick yeah it's like a 41 ish or something hey guys talking about deep structure on shield lakes we have to talk about baits a little bit and it's pretty simple for us we throw a lot of diving rods and a lot of rubber around that deep breaking shoreline or deep breaking reefs for us a lot of it comes down to we just keep it simple suex diving rise so like stuff like that harvey javelin um bar fighters we just stick with what we know is going to work in that situation. For rubber, we use a lot of Lake X Toads and Lake X B-52s, B-2s, a lot of Medusas, a lot of Bulldogs. Just rubber that you guys are all familiar with that you can kind of count down over those breaks. You can let it hang a little bit deeper. That's always a good choice. We do use a lot of crankbaits around deeper structure. This is a new bait. And this is one that we caught a few on last year. And just doing a quick pull pause type of retrieve, you can get this down six to seven feet and you are into that area of that first break line that might bottom out at 12 feet. But if fish are suspended at eight feet, you're going to get this style of bait right down into them. We use a ton of bucktails. Everybody that follows us know that we throw a ton of Dadsons, and Dadson actually has some that are specifically weighted heavier to get them deeper. Here's a 10. This just has extra weight. We're able to get this deeper in the water column, slow roll it in, and keep that down in the water six or seven feet on the retrieve. This is another one from Dadson with twin fluted eights but it's a bigger profile bait it's got a lot of weight to it and this is another one that with the smaller blades it doesn't have as much lift as the mag blades so we can run this a little bit deeper in the water and that's something that we turn to lots a great style to get down in the water is the prop style bait this is one from musky munchies out of Winnipeg and this is one of his mega slurps it has blades that go opposite directions through the water but this style of bait does not have as much lift as conventional mag blades. So this will run deeper in the water column. And because this always spins in the water, you can retrieve this a lot slower and cover that deeper break line. Something new this year is the grenade from Mayhem, Musky Mayhem. And this is one that I'm sure everybody's gonna want to get you can run this deeper in the water column i think that brad designed this to get down spots where a conventional bucktail would not and if you try to do a pull and pause i'm told that the blades will spin on the drop 
We are going to get this in the water as soon as we get open water and get some underwater footage for you guys. Another one new last year from Drop Time Tackle is the Base Jumper. And this is one of the early ones. It's weighted forward. It's heavy. And the key with this is you can do that pull pause and you can walk this down those first brake lines. And the blades will always spin on the fall. And we got this in the water late last year. And I will put a link to a video that we did on this down in the description below. But this is going to be another one you're going to be able to cover so much water that a conventional bucktail, you just cannot walk it down those brake lines like you can something like this or that grenade. For us at 54 Bus, fishing deeper structure in summer is all about finding that first break, finding that first shelf or possibly the second shelf and just starting out deeper, move your way in as opposed to just rolling up on a spot and trying to cast to the shallowest spot that you can get to where maybe you were actually sitting on top of the boat or on top of the fish with your boat. So we like to start a little bit further back and then work our way in. Appreciate you guys watching and for some deep water action, check out this video right here where you're gonna watch us catch one of our nicer fish of the summer. And we get two real nice fish out on open water on Suex. And for now, 54 Bust is out of here and we'll catch you guys out on the water later.